Park Communion service tonight. Would you jump on your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise? Give the Lord a big, big shout of praise. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Lift up your voices and appreciate the goodness of God. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. Father, we are grateful for the privilege of life, for the privilege of connection, for fellowship with you. We appreciate you. Lift up your voices and give God praise for seeing you about your various businesses, for health, for divine providence. We are grateful for the signs and wonders, for the multiplicities of help that we receive upon this mountain. And what we are set to receive even tonight, we give you all the glory. Blessed be your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus, we have given thanks. It's another power communion service in John chapter 6, verse 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. The master speaking. We have come to connect with the mystery of godliness tonight. Say, Father, I ask for your touch upon me. I ask for a definite visitation and encounter in this service. I ask, oh God, that your wisdom, your strength, your vitality will dwell upon me bodily tonight. Whatever we have come with as an expectation, Father, we ask that you grant us manifestations. You give unto us results. You deliver answers into our hands. Let no flesh, no mortal be innocent or ignorant of what you are set to do in our midst. We ask, oh God, above all, that your presence will tabernacle upon us. Brood over this service. We subscribe to your help and express our helplessness as your servant stands to declare your immutable counsels. Lord, we ask, oh Lord, that it address specific situations in the lives of your children. Thank you, mighty God, because your power shall tra be transmitted across the airways to heal, to deliver to transform and to change. Blessed be your name forever. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. You believe God has heard our prayers. Would you put those hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. I'm convinced without a doubt that God is faithful and you have a testimony. Proceed to the entrance of the glory gate. A minister will attend to you and shortly you'll be invited to share with the larger house. With Jesus' joy, may we receive the praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Lift your hands and begin to worship the I am that I am. If you're happy to see the last Wednesday of this month, begin to worship the King of Kings.
please be seated and put your hands together for the following testimonies. Do it bigger and bigger unto the King of Kings. And please step out as you hear your name. Sharon Ajao, Temitope Filade, and Abraham Adu. Celebrate the King of Kings. Again, Abraham Adu, Temitope Filade, and Sharon Ajao. Give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a BB clap offering. What a mighty God is served. Sharon Ajao, please step up here. Confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord did for you. Please face the congregation. Praise God. My name is Sharon Ajao. Sometime in January, I applied for visa to travel, and it was quite cumbersome. The process wasn't as easy as I thought. So I left, and I couldn't even get into the embassy to do the interview from the reception. They had issues with my documents. So one and a half weeks ago, I went back and did the interview. They told me that in two weeks' time, it will be out. So on Sunday, close of second service, Daddy prophesied the release of travel documents within 24 hours. And on Monday, I got an email that I should come to the embassy to, co to collect my passport. So when I got there on Tuesday, I collected my passport and my visa was approved. But I just left casually and so at the gate, one of the staff was telling me that since morning, you are the first person that was approved. And as at yesterday evening, I needed a hundred euros more to complete my ticketing and I just trusted God. Before night, a relative sent the 166 euros and I got my tickets. Praise God. Celebrate the King of Kings. In this season of release, recovery and replication, your watch shall come speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell me to pray. Felade, please confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord did for you. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Temitope Filade. I want to thank God for his power at work on this mountain. Um, some time ago, my dad was diagnosed with scrotal enlargement. It's not the type that usually falls ill. Um, it was very discouraging and heartbreaking. So in the midst of that, I, um, sent, I sent a text to daddy and I told him that he could not urinate for days. He was in pain, uncomfortable, and um, they went to the hospital and they had, they had to insert a um, catheter to help him drain the urine. And um, I believe that's not a normal way of life. So um, Daddy replied, and then he said that agenda of the devil is cancelled in Jesus' name. Shortly after, because um, I'm medically inclined as well, I knew that. It's either they do a surgery, and I was just afraid of so many things, but the word of the Lord on this mountain that I heard, I engaged in prayers, and then the word from that day encouraged me a lot. The catheter has been removed. It urinates normally. The enlargement has gone down. I believe in the power of God, and I praise God forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Celebrate the King of Kings. What a faithful God we serve. Abraham, Adu. Please confirm your name and tell the church what the Lord did for you. Praise the Lord. I'm Abraham Adu. Uh, over six years ago, uh, six, six years ago, we were believing God for the fruit of the womb. So it's down on us that we have to come. We came down to Abuja here because we watch uh, the program via uh, TV. So that month, Daddy prayed for we. he we, Daddy prayed for us that day when we came. We, he prayed for both of us, my wife and I, and that month she conceived. So now we have two children now. For some reasons, we can't come together, but God's willing, we'll be here. Hallelujah. You simplified the testimony as, if it was, uh, as simple as that. For within those six years, he has been to several worship centers. He has done IVF that failed. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And uh, somebody told them, go to Dunamis International Gospel Center. Your problem will be solved. And they came in that spirit. And they were also privileged to meet with the servant of God who prayed for them. He said, go and bring forth. That same month, six years, uh, barrenness was terminated. And she has returned to give glory to God for that wonderful deal. help from God. Let's give Jesus a bigger clap and a shout of praise. 
If you believe you shall be coming back with your testimony, can you add a shout of hallelujah? I am coming back with my testimony. 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 Hey, girl, I won't stop me. Girl, I won't stop me. Baby, I won't stop me. Child, I won't stop me. Nobody can stop me. Nothing, nothing, nothing can stop me. You are coming back. We are your testimony. Coming, 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 coming. We are your testimony. Testimony. coming back with our testimonies in the name of Jesus. I'd like to welcome you tonight to this wonderful time in God's presence. Our Seeds of Destiny today is titled, The Power of Relationship. How many of you remember that song? Ah. <laughs> Sir? It's just a handful of. So, um, music director, can we have the privilege of that song soon? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, that song was a great blessing to me, and I believe that it will be a blessing to many of us who have not been acquainted with it. Our Seeds of Destiny today is titled, The Power of Relationship. We have been going through a series. The senior pastor has taught very extensively on um, uh, the power of relationship and amidst other things that have been the emphasis in our Seeds of Destiny for the month of February. And today we want to understand that your relationships can mar your life and destiny or they can make your life and destiny. Secondly, we understand that relationships can bring out the best in you or the worst in you. And so we've been encouraged by the senior pastor to ensure that you keep um, a, a tab on your relationship you keep you are mindful of your relationship so that you are not engaged with you are not associated with somebody who would bring out the worst in you associate with people who will bring out the best in you people who will not encourage you to cheat or lie or drink or um commit immorality and all that. On the other hand, ensure that you associate yourself with people who will increase your fire, increase your relationship with God, increase your hunger after God, and help you to be a more prayerful person. When you do that, I see that you shall rise up in your victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Our counsel to you today is choose your associations carefully if you must fulfill destiny. Somebody say, I hear that. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands as we pray. Say after me, thank you, Lord, for showing me relationship wisdom. I receive the grace to relate with the right people and to disconnect from the wrong people. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Praise God. We'll be proceeding right away, just like that song we sang. I'm coming back with my testimony, which was received and written by God's servant, the senior pastor. The choir will be ministering again. Another song in this evening's service, also received and written by God's servant, the senior pastor, Dr. Pastor Paul Enenche. As a singer and minister, I believe you'll be blessed. Let's receive the dynamis voice with a clap offering. Of your 
Totally available to do, Lord, as you please. On the altar, Lord, I have laid down my heart. 
Your hands, lift your voice and worship him. Worship him, honor him. tonight and let your name alone be glorified in Jesus name please be seated one moment I am totally Part 2 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 58 Therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Upholding dedication part two. Last week, we began seeing what it took, or what it takes to uphold our dedication to God. It's important to know that success is a product of understanding. And good success is a product of good understanding. Every realm, every endeavor where men succeeded or where they are successful, they have understanding. To succeed in our journey of dedication with God, we must possess understanding of what it takes. 
last Wednesday, we began as we saw some three secrets of remaining firm for God. Number one was unceasing prayer in the spirit. Number two was consistent consecrational fast. Number three was keeping the company of the dedicated and the passionate. That was where we stopped. Number four is a deep understanding of life's purpose. A deep understanding of life's purpose. The deeper your understanding of your purpose in life, the stronger your dedication to God. The master Jesus lived a dedicated life and it was rooted in the understanding of the purpose of life. In Luke chapter 18 verse 37, Jesus speaking said, and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Go on. All right. Sorry, John 18, 37. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In John chapter 10 and in verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Two things to note. First, an understanding of life's purpose. As we see in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Reverence God. And apply your life to his demands. That is why you are alive. An understanding of life's purpose. As in Isaiah 53, 43, 21. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Brings focus to life. And deliverance from distractions. It brings focus to life. It brings deliverance from distractions. When you understand that you were formed for your life to glorify him. When you understand that your whole duty, your whole duty is to fear God and keep his commandment. There is focus to life. And there is deliverance from destruction. An understanding of life's purpose. Dash Isaiah 43 21, Ecclesiastes 12 13, another dash brings fo focus to life and deliverance from distraction. Number two, an understanding of life's purpose bets fire in the heart of man, it bets fire in the heart, fire and passion. When you know why you are alive and that your basic reason for being alive was to bring glory to God. He said in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. He said I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that read it. That he may run. That, that is fire. To run means you, you acquired fire. 
An understanding of life's purpose gives focus and delivers from distraction. It bets fire in the heart. That was number five, four. A deep understanding of life's purpose. Number five is a deep understanding of the transientness of life or the temporalness of life. When we understand that life is transient and that life is temporal, it assists our dedication to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 He said Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That man's life is dust and he will return back to dust at an appointed time. In James chapter 4 verse 14, James speaking said, Life is a vapor. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life, it is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. An understanding of the transientness of life. And this is not to suggest that somebody is permitted to die carelessly or die any day. That's not what he's suggesting. Is suggesting that even if you live 70 years or live 120 years, it is vapor compared to eternity. It's just a vapor that just passed. That the real, the real life is eternal life. It's just a vapor that just passed. What does that do to you? A deep understanding of the transientness of life makes one to live cautiously instead of carelessly. You live cautiously. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14, fear God, keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. For God is going to bring every thing, walk into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So it, so it, it makes someone to live Cautiously instead of recklessly. Secondly, a deep understanding of the transientness of life makes one to live wisely and with the sense of urgency. It makes you to live wisely and live with the sense of urgency. Psalm 90 verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Ephesians chapter 5 and in verse 15 and verse 16. See then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. You live wisely with a sense of urgency. You live cautiously. I have seen people who became more serious with God at the grave sight of somebody. Am I communicating? Just because, is this what life is all about? Two young men, friends, received a message to get born again at a place. And this guy wanted to go out, but his friend, he was considering his friend. If I go out now, my friend, what will, will he think about me? Maybe I'll do it later. After that, he had a terrible accident, he died. The one who, who was considering his friend. At the grave sight of his friend, the one because of whom this one couldn't get saved and died before he got saved. At, the, at his graveside, the other one gave his life to Christ. Hallelujah. You shall fulfill your days. 
but we shall live carelessly. We shall live cautiously instead of carelessly and we shall live wisely with the sense of urgency. So we have a deep understanding of life's purpose, a deep understanding of the transientness of life or the temporalness of life and number six is a deep understanding of eternal rewards. A deep understanding of eternal rewards. That after our lives on earth, rewards await us. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. We just read that. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be, on, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abound in the work of the law because you know that your labor is not in vain in the law. That is, brother, you are not wasting your time. Pastor, you are not wasting your life. Church worker, you are not wasting your life. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. He said, blessed are the dead. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Whatever they labored on earth goes with them. They have not wasted their time. They have not wasted their labors. Their works follow them. First Corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 13 and in verse 14. He said, every man's work, all of us, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. Of what sort it is. The second part is the most frightening. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. That is etern eternally. But he himself shall be saved like somebody who was pulled out of fire. Do you understand that? He shall be saved as, as true fire. That is, he is, is, is shall only escape with the skin of his feet. So when we understand that whatever we are doing has eternal rewards, we do it more seriously. That my prayer life, my study of the word, my evangelism, everything I'm doing with God, there is reward after, after now. Then I do it more seriously. I do it more seriously. My givings, investments in the kingdom, I'm not wasting my time, then I do it more seriously. So number one, or two, five, six, eight, a deep understanding of eternal rewards helps us to direct our lives, time, energy, and resources into that which will matter in the afterlife. Again, a deep understanding of eternal rewards helps us to direct our life's time, energy, and resources into that which will matter in the afterlife. When we understand that everything on earth is temporary and the main life is after this life, then you direct your life's time, your life's energy, your life's resources into that which will matter in the afterlife. Does it mean I stop going to work? No. While at work, you direct, you direct your energy, your time, and your resources to glorify God on that work, on, in that workplace. And to see how many can be led to God from that workplace. 
Does it mean I stop making money? No. Oh, you can make as much money as you can and direct massive resources into global evangelism, especially in this end time. Yes, lifetime, energy, and resources. Secondly, a deep understanding of eternal rewards helps us to make every second of our lives to count for God. It makes us, helps us to make every moment of our lives to count for God. Helps us to make every second of our lives to count for God. Every moment of our lives to count for God. Like they say, a deep understanding of eternal rewards helps us to make hay while the sun shines. To make hay while the sun shines. It helps us to strike the iron when it is hot. It helps us to make, to make the hay while the sun shines. To strike the iron when it is hot. It makes us not to give, up, give God the balance of our life's energy. We give him the best. Not when you are tired and completely retired and you cannot do anything anymore, for your, even for yourself. No. The active years of your life, on job and out of job, on duty, out of duty, given to God. This is what this does for us. That is why we must reflect on these things consistently so that it keeps us on fire. Tonight, this is the counsel or the conclusion. You have just one life to live. I have just one life to live, and it must glorify you. I am yours, O Lord, in time and for all eternity. I have just one life to live, and it must glorify you. I am yours, O Lord, in time and for all eternity. We have just one life to live, and it must count for something far beyond survival or making a living. Did you hear what I just said? You have just one life to live. And it must count for something far beyond survival. Or making a living. I'm just living to make a, just trying to make a living. I'm just trying to survive the, the times. No. Shift your vision higher. For how far you can see is how far you can go. If all you see is how to survive, it is, survive, it is how to survive you will get. If all you see is how to make a living, it is how to make a living that you will see. But if you are seeing the realm of life where you are beyond making a living, beyond making, I mean, you are, God has helped you to a point where what you are looking for is not what to eat, but how many people to feed and how to impact your generation. That is what you will have. Just one life. It must count for something far beyond survival or making a living. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are and just give him the praise. Take that song from the beginning.
just speak to God. I want to live this life for you. I don't want to waste it. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To direct my life's time, energy, and resources to that which really matters. Help me to direct my life's time, energy, and resources to that which really matters. Direct my life's time, energy, and resources to that which really matters. Open your mouth and speak to God. Open your mind and speak. I have just one life to live. And it must be real for me. I am yours, O Lord, in time. And for all eternity.
revival in my prayer life. I don't know for some reason I'm not studying the word as I should. I'm not praying as I should. I'm not doing the things I should. I need a higher fire of dedication. You can step towards this altar here and go on your knees and pour your heart to God. As you are coming, you come with your Bibles and your bags so you don't leave it on your seat except there is somebody there. Lift your hands now. I come running after you. You are watching online. Go in front of your television. I need fresh fire from God. Passion for the world. Passion for study. Passion for prayer. Passion for evangelism. Passion for giving. Now, if the altar is filled, ushers who can see they can use the aisles as well. As you come, come with your Bibles, come with your faith.
forever I am chained in the presence of your majesty do something new to my prayer life change my study of the world 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 leparata sida change my prayer life my evangelism life change my character integrity life of worship i request change i desire change Jesus Christ. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Jesus. Be upstanding now, everybody, including those who came to the altar. Get your hands up. Get your hands high. Get your hands up. Shut it. Shut it. That's right. It's about to touch you. Coals of fire. Shut it. That spell of prayerlessness is about to be broken. That spell of inability to study, to worship, is about to be broken. That spell of lukewarmness is about to be broken by the hand of God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes! Touch me with your hand. Oh. Lion of 
done. God be with your head. Mashiah, yeah, yeah, yeah.